Hey everyone, we're talking about search and seizure and I figured it would be easier for me to talk to you than it would be for me to write individually uh, to everyone in their discussion boards about a couple things. So we're going to cover the absolute basics in this video because I'm going to try to do it in just a few minutes. The Fourth Amendment in search and seizure is where we operate as police officers. This is where we spend the most of our time. Every car stop is a seizure. Every arrest is a seizure. Every investigatory stop is a seizure. These are all seizures. So when we're talking about search and seizure, it's very, very important that as police officer, we understand this. And that with the Fourth Amendment, this is where we operate. The Fourth and Fifth Amendment, that's our, that's our home as police officers. So let me give you a little bit of what we need to be aware of while we're making these stops and investigating crimes and things of that nature. Now you've mentioned it um, in your discussion boards that you do need probable cause. That is your standard of proof. Probable cause. That's for a search and that's for an arrest. No exceptions. It's probable cause. Now that doesn't mean that it is beyond a reasonable doubt, which is what you need for a conviction. This is for a search or an arrest. I'll say it again. Probable cause, probable cause. Even if you are having a consent search, if you ask someone to search and they want to give you consent, you still need probable cause to do the search. And what the term they use is fishing. You can't just ask everybody that you pull over, hey, can I search your car? Do you have anything in your car um, that I should know about? A lot of policemen do that. But we should, before we're asking to search a car, we're still supposed to have probable cause. Now, a couple cases that we have looked at um, for national cases, one of the cases that the Supreme Court brings up regularly is um, Schimmel v. California. Now, in this particular case, Schimmel was arrested for burglary in his house, and then the police searched his house. And they said, oh, it's search incident to arrest which means after you're arrested, the police can search you. And we can search your whole body. Um, if, if necessary, it goes to where we would be able to do a, a strip search if necessary. But once you're under arrest, search into an incident to arrest, we can arrest you, uh, we can search you, okay? What Schimmel said is, you can search the immediate area, the wingspan, of a person for means of escape or anything dangerous. Once you take that person out of that situation, are they a danger anymore? And the court said, no, they're not. They're handcuffed in the back of your car, then they're not going to be a danger. So why is it search incident to arrest that you're going to search their house or their home or something like that? And the courts now regularly said, no, you need to get a warrant. There's no exception. Um, a recent two recent cases that just came down from the United States Supreme Court um, just decided uh, last month is that police were searching cell phones after an arrest and saying it's search incident to arrest and of course you're going to uh, not be surprised they said no you can't do that uh, the phone is not dangerous you're supposed to be searching for means of escape or something that's dangerous and the phone's not dangerous. Yes, it may have evidence in it, but if you want that evidence, you're gonna need to do a search warrant. I hope this clears up some of the stuff. There's so much uh, to do, uh, or so much to know about search and seizure. I can teach a 40 hours just on search and seizure, but a brief overview is probable cause for search. Now, I'll throw in here, just as at the end, that doesn't mean you need probable cause to stop or to investigate. You need to have reasonable or articulable suspicion. But if you're going to search or arrest, it's probable cause. Okay, that's all I have. Um, any questions, send me an email, and I will, uh, I'll try to get it out to you guys. I hope this was helpful, and keep up the good work. I'll talk to you in a bit.